Oh, What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? This is Stefan Mayhew, partner of Janika Wills, Group 6. And today, we're here to talk to you all about Chapter 21. Chapter 21 deals with a lot of mass and uh, a lot of crowds and a lot of different um, relationships dealing with cultural relativ relativism. So today, we're going to talk to you all a little bit about that. I'm going to have Janique with here, give you all some highlights, summary about the chapter, and a couple key terms. And um, after that, we'll get into a little bit of vocab and have you all watch a clip about what's going on. All right? So Janique will take hey it away. Hey, guys. It's Janique Wells. I'll be partnering with Stefan Mayhew, and we did Chapter 21 together. So I'm just going to tell you a little about the highlights and the summary of Chapter 21. Now, chapter 21, the first section talked about some collective behavior. Now, collective behavior is just a non-institutionalized activity in countless or several people, and is, it isn't mandated by any institution. Emergent non-perspective is like basically the way people will react to a crowd, institution, and how their individual sets would be, you know, of norms. So they want to compare those, you know, with the crowd and by themselves to see how, you know, that would be different. Now, the value added theory that is basically a perspective within the functionalist family that is something that you have to look out with all conditions now assembling perspective this perspective is a way that people understand collective behavior but it's an attribute it is an attribute to the individuals in the crowd and how they're being rational so we want to see how they act with the crowd as well but in a collective action the forms that I have for you for collective behavior will be crowd, mass, and public. Those are the three type of forms I have for you. Now, on to social movements. We also talked about those. Those are basically purposeful, organized groups um, who strive to work in a common social goal. So, trying to work to get to a certain goal. Now, I've looked at some theoretical perspectives in the social movement. It's three as well so I'll tell you the three. First one will be resource mobilization. Now resource mobilization is basically a theory explaining you know the success being able to acquire resources. Framing analysis number two that will be able to explain how individuals identify and understand how social events work and how their norms should be allowed in any given situation. The third one will be new social movement theory now that is a type of development of a european social scientist during the 50s and the 60s now it attempts to explain the increase of numbers and post-modern movements so things that happened before the modern you know society today and how that formed us um the levels of that i would say um is four levels it would be local state, national, and global being the biggest. Now, for our last part of um, chapter 21, we also talk about some causes of social change, and that is modernization. Modernization is basically involving the action of how it increases, you know, the pursuit of people to change um, to a more modern um, aspect or environment. So they go from an undeveloped society to a developed society with technology being involved so there were technology social institutions population and environment being the four forms so if you missed anything from the beginning of my video i'm going to give you a summary of what everything i just talked to up in short so collective behavior is just a non-institutionalized activity in which individuals voluntarily engage Collective behavior is crowd, public, and mass. It's three forms. Now, there are three main theories, which are emergent norm perspective, value-added theory, and the assembling perspective. We're also going to talk about some social movements. Now, social movements are an organized type of purposeful group that encourage change. So it also stands as a political voice for those who do not have one. Four common sources would be social sciences, technology, social institutions, population, and environment. 
Now, each one of these sections determines how the society changes. If a change happens in one area, then all of the society is affected. Make sense? These all can be happening with the root of modernization. That's where that comes in. Now, modernization is ordinarily just a result of how social change refers to the process of increased contrast within a society. So modernization is ordinarily just the social change of when you refer to a process of increased contrast and it is specialization in um, within our society. So we have a sort of stigma that modern societies are better. This has been compelling though. So it's compelling because there has been a decrease on the Western centric side about, you know, the peripheral and semi-peripheral countries that should be pursuing to be like North America and Western Europe. So that's my summary for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me and Stefan a thumbs up and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye. Valuable intellectual information coming from a partner that has great wisdom. Thank you, Janique. And now let's move on to the vocabulary. So I know Janique went over a couple of vocabulary terms such as mass and crowd and even public. But I have a few here that maybe she hasn't quite mentioned within the chapter, such as resistant movements. Resistant movements seek to prevent or undo change to a social structure. So a social resistant movement might be the Ku Klux Klan, you know, or it might be Minutemen, or it might just be black people in general looking to, you know, overthrow the government that is not for us but supposedly made by us. Another word is an expressive crowd. An expressive crowd is a group of people who gather to express emotion or feelings of excitement as an opportunity to participate. So an expressive crowd could be like a political group rallying up for a, a Trump rally or back when President Barack Obama was in, uh, in office or running for office people gathering in support of Obama were called an expressive group. To kind of relate to some of the definitions of vocabulary that we just listed, I got a video that we'd like to show y'all just to kind of get you all to grasp the idea of what we're kind of coming at in these terms with this definition of expressive crowd and a resistant movement. So here you go. So again, as Janiko said, I hope you all enjoyed our video. Hopefully we get to see each other in the next meeting or something. I don't know. Live chat somehow, some way, possibly. But um, you all have a good one and don't forget to do that discussion board.